أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه الورى الميامين أبعد تس ذكر Peace and blessings, greetings of wholeness and health and peace upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and upon all the messengers of Allah. And they include, but they're not limited to, the ones either the Muslims have found in the Quran or. Muslims have found out about from their environment. We have uh, Buddha. The Indian Muslims have told us that he was a prophet in Krishna and Rama. Now people turned them into gods just like they did with Jesus. But they were prophets. They were messengers of God. So we bid the greetings of peace and wholeness upon all the messengers of, of Allah, including these and uh, Ibrahim and Moses and Jesus and the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, who was the last messenger. The topic today is Dajjal, the Antichrist. The Prophet وسلم, pointed to a young man and, and said that he took his companions with him. And he said, this is the Dajjal. And he will be unleashed. He will become active in a fit of rage. And that he has uh, jinn properties and human properties. Like when he sleeps, his, uh, he doesn't really sleep. Jinn never sleep. They're made of energy. They're made of fire. So he's half jinn, half human. His mother is Jewish. His father is not clear because he has to be a jinn. He could be Iblis himself. Um, and um, and then in the year 17 Hijri, the Muslims were besieging a town in Persia, current day Iran. And this report is in a, a well respected commentary on Sahih Bukhari which is called Fath al-Bari by Ibn Hajar. He mentions this report and that the Muslims witnessed the um, unleashing of the Dajjal there. And the way it happened was that he did have a fit of rage in front of the gate of that town and he kicked it and it broke open. Just before that, the monks, there were Christian monks, among others. Uh, they were, Persia was populated uh, in that time by, by fire worshippers, by Magians or Magians. But there were also Christians. So the Christians in the town said, our forefathers told us that you're not going to be able to conquer this town unless the Jal is amongst you. And sure enough, this young Jewish man who has become a Muslim was one of the soldiers and he kicked the gate in a fit of rage and broke the gate open. This is history. It's documented. And a few years later, he was seen being crowned in the same place where the Prophet wasallam told us he will be unleashed, which is near... Isfahan or Asfahan, 
in current-day Iran, in Persia. And uh, for 50 years or so after that, the same young man, his name is Ibn Sayyad, Safi Ibn Sayyad. Safi Ibn Sayyad kept going around to the companions of the Prophet and saying, look, I'm not him. Now, after he became active and some people witnessed his, his activation and everything, he spent 50 years talking to the Muslims, especially the companions of the Prophet, trying to convince them that it's not him. He's not that. He's not the Jal. He's not the Antichrist. One of them, all these reports are in Bukhari and Muslim. These are not like far-fetched reports. They are authentic reports. In one of the encounters with Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, he came to him and he said, um, and I'm not quoting the hadith exactly, but he kept making arguments that he can't be Dajjal because the Prophet said that Jal cannot enter Medina, and I have gone to Medina. And the Prophet said that Jal is, is a kafir, and I'm a Muslim. The Prophet said that Jal would never have uh, children, and I have children, and, uh, and so on. And you, companions of the Prophet, you know, I don't blame the people, but you, companions of the Prophet, should know better. And Abu Sa'id says, I almost believed him, I, or I got doubts. Now, the companions of the Prophet, of course, they had no doubts. Omar swore that he was the Dajjal, and others also swore. And they swore in front of the Prophet. And, uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Omar radiallahu anhu and others. And so, um, in the end, after feeling that he has gotten to the companion, Abu Sa'id, he said, you know, if you want to know who the Dajjal is, I know exactly where he is. I know where he, who his mother is, who his father is, and where he lives now, and so on, where he was born. So he was bragging about knowing the Jah. And then Abu Sa'id turned to him and said, Oh, may you never prosper in your life. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> so he, he exposed himself. He's stupid. You know, the Jal is stupid. Just, and the Jal is mentioned in the Quran many times as a leader of deceivers, a leader of the hypocrites. Now the Prophet also told us that he will be unleashed in, in Iran, in Persia. Every hadith, every hadith has to be based on the Quran. So I will attempt to show that uh, first of all the Quran refers to Dajjal and second that the Quran links Dajjal with Iran, with Persia. And this is how I'm going to do it. Uh, I have discussed before verse 14 of Surah Al-Baqarah, which says, and when they are alone with their devils, it says, when they meet the believers, they say, we believe, like you. But when they are alone with their devils, with their satans, with their shaitan, which uh, sh the word shaitan means leader of rebellion. And it can be a jinn, it can be a human. And usually in the Quran, there's shayateen jinn, shayateen ins, or the context uh, refers to a jinn shaitan or a human shaitan. In uh, the last two words in the Quran are min al jinnati wa nas. So the waswas, the, the nuisance that comes into our minds, can come from, from humans and from jinn, and they're both called shaitan, waswas, khannas. So, um, this is not a speculation, this is a, a clear thing, that there are human and jinn shaitan. The Prophet also mentioned hybrid shaitans. He called them mugarrabin, meaning mixed with aliens, mixed with non-jinn, or jinn mixed with non-jinn, or humans mixed with non-humans. So two species together in one person. And the Prophet ﷺ explained that if someone goes to his wife without saying Bismillah rahman rahim that what could happen is a jinn could accompany and there could be a, a pregnancy by the jinn. Now this is hadith. But um, more importantly, the word shayateen here in verse 14 does not say whether there are jinn 
or humans. They have to be able to communicate, to sit down with humans, because they are leaders of the hypocrites. This is what verse uh, 14 tells us. They sit down. These are humans that come to us and say we're believers, but Allah says they're not believers. And then when they sit down with these leaders of rebellion, with these shaitans, um, they have, those shaitans that they sit down with must have human form. But since they are named shaitan, and it's not defined in the Quran here, whether in, in verse 14, whether they are jinn or humans, they could be a mix, they could be hybrids. So it makes sense that their top leader would be the Jal. He's the leader of, of hypocrites for sure. The Prophet ﷺ warned us that uh, the most dangerous tool of the Jal are misguiding Imams, those who build sabotage mosques, Masjid Dirar. And I will, uh, if we have time, I will get to the Masjid Dirar. This Masjid is the opposite of Masjid Dirar. It's a Masjid Usus ala Taqwa min awali yawm established upon taqwa, upon uh, God consciousness from the first day. Um, so what is the link to Iran? Verse 76 in Al-Baqarah has a similar formulation to verse 14. It says, it starts exactly like the other verse starts. And when they meet the believers, they say, we believe. Now, we don't need a, a stronger match than that. Several words match exactly. But the rest says, and when they are alone with each other. So it tells us that the shaitans are part of those each other. And this verse definitely refers, refers to the children of Israel who were involved in the story of killing someone and they were told to slaughter a cow. The verses before are clear and we are told uh, that we shouldn't hope that they would believe in Islam or that they would believe us um, because a, a party of them would listen to the words of Allah and then change them after they have understood them knowingly. And then comes verse 76 that says, and when they meet the believers, they say, we believe, and when they are alone with each other. So if you put the two verses together, 14 and 76, you come to the conclusion that the shayateen are from the children of Israel. That is clear. And this is why the Prophet wasallam identified the Jal, the Antichrist, the leader of these shayateen, as that Jewish young man. That's the basis in the Quran for that hadith. Now, what is the link to, to Iran, to Persia? That is found in uh, talk about the children of Israel who rejected the Torah and rejected the Gospel and rejected the Quran. And verse 101 says that, and when a messenger from Allah came to them, confirming what they have in their hands, a section, a group from those who have been given the scripture through the book of Allah behind their backs and pretended they didn't know. And instead, Verse 102 says, instead, they followed what the Satans were reciting at the time of the kingdom of Solomon. It wasn't Solomon who became a Kafir, but it was the Satans who became Kafirs. They were teaching people sorcery. Satans were teaching people sorcery. Now again, how would Satans communicate with people? unless they were mixed or they appeared in human form. And they were also teaching people what has been sent down to the two angels in Babylon. Now Babylon is in Iraq, it's near Baghdad. 
But in those days, uh, Babylon was um, the capital of a Persian kingdom. So Babylon, Babylon links these children of Israel who reject the holy books of Allah to Babylon. And we know from history that they were, they were there. They went there and they were, when they were chased out of uh, Jerusalem, they went there. So this verse, I don't have to continue talking about uh, sorcery. It's a different subject. But these, they followed what those Satans in Babylon were teaching. That's what the context here points to, the teachings of the two angels who were testing people by teaching them about sorcery and saying to them, don't do it. This is sorcery. Don't do it. We are just a test. So verse 76 links the leaders of the hypocrites to the children of Israel. Verse 102 links the children of Israel to Babylon and the Satans to Babylon. So the Satans in verse 14 are children of Israel, according to verse 76, and the Satans are linked to Babylon, according to verse 102 in Surah Al-Baqarah. So there we have the basis for why the Prophet wasallam told us that Jal is going to be a Jewish man, half human, half jinn, from the children of Israel, and he is going to be unleashed in Iran, in Persia, in Asfahan, Isfahan, to be uh, sure. And indeed, he was crowned in Isfahan, and Muslims witnessed that. When they um, conquered Isfahan or Asfahan, the Prophet said, and all this happened just a few years after the death of the Prophet. So the Jal, some people say he has not been unleashed yet, but Muslims witnessed his unleashing. This just tells you how Muslims have done something similar to what the Jews and the Christians have done with their scripture. They have lost some of it. They have lost the, some evidence. They don't talk about it anymore. You will rarely find anybody mention this stuff, although it is all in, in Hadith, it is in Islamic history, and the early Muslims knew all that. It disappeared from our eyes. So then, for current events, for what the world is experiencing now, we know that the hypocrites are playing a role because Allah told us in verses 8 to 20 of Surah Al-Baqarah that those hypocrites are responsible for the bulk of destruction on earth. And they are Muslims. They say, we believe in Allah in the last day. And their leaders are from the children of Israel. And their top man, the Jal, is headquartered in Iran. This is what the Quran tells us. And this is what the Prophet told us. So, therefore, the focus on Iran in the, in the current events. Now, I'm not going to make any speculations here. This would be way too, too far from what you need here in your community. But I'm going to focus on that verse. I will continue to talk about the subject. And I do make recordings at home and post them on my YouTube channel, which is called, Why is God Doing This? So you go to YouTube, Why is God Doing This? That's where you find uh, some of the things that are not appropriate for here, but it's one of my interests, analyzing current events uh, based on the Quran and Hadith. And the Hadith only explains the Quran. So here is those verses. Here are those verses that talk about the good mosque, uh, the, the verse that talks about, the, the verse that is the slogan or the, the, the motto of this masjid is here. But uh, the series of verses starts with verse 107 that talks about a bad mosque. And I want 
to just uh, explain this verse and leave the rest for later because we're running out of time. This verse, uh, we'll read it in Arabic so that you hear the words and recognize them as I talk about them. Verse 107 of Surah 9, at tawbah أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين اتخذوا مسجدا ضرارا وكفرا وتفريقا بين المؤمنين وإرصادا لمن حارب الله ورسوله من قبل ولا يحلفن إن أردنا إلا الحسن والله يشهد إنهم لكاذبون And then there are those who create a masjid for the purpose of doing harm. And out of kufr, out of disbelief. So they're kafirs and they're creating a masjid. They're kafirs and they're creating a Muslim organization. And in order to create wars, separations, civil wars between the believers, between the Muslims, are we seeing that in the Middle East? Yes. Who is doing it? Muslim organizations. And they are spies, intelligence agents, ambush workers, sabotage commandos, special forces, psychological operations, you name it. The word in the Quran is irsad, and rasad means to lay in wait, to ambush to do it secretly, to monitor secretly, to monitor in order to strike. We're talking about military, secret military operations and intelligence operations. So this masjid is created by kafirs for the purpose of harm to Muslims, for the purpose of destruction, and for the purpose of creating civil wars amongst Muslims and it is a spy station. We're not talking about a mosque. The word mosque is a symbol for a religious organization, a Muslim organization, even a whole sect, a whole group of Muslims. But who are they spying for? Who are they collaborating with? They're collaborating with those who have made war, who have waged war against Allah and his messenger before. Those who make wars on Islam are their allies. Now, who keeps making wars on Islam? It's usually, you know, Christians and, and Jews, like the state of Israel, Western nations motivated by Christian fundamentalism and whatever else, and uh, the Jewish lobby, wars for Israel. Who collaborates with them? Muslims. Who's the leader of these Muslims? They are hypocrites. So who's the leader of the hypocrites? Dajjal. Dajjal. No, Shaitan. Shaitan leads the Kafirs. Dajjal works for Shaitan. Dajjal is a spy for Shaitan. He's the leader of spies and hypocrites and saboteurs that live among Muslims and they create Muslim organizations for the purpose of civil war and for the purpose of helping the non-Muslims invade the Muslims. And this is what we are witnessing in the Middle East and it is all described in, in, in ayah in verse 107 in all detail. Allah's words are, are perfect and precise and short and powerful. So uh, I think, uh, well, um, since we have a little time, uh, I will continue. They swear, they swear we certainly only want excellence. These hypocritical Muslim organizations, what do they call them in the news? Fundamentalists, Salafis, uh, extremists, this and that. They claim all they're striving for is excellence in Islam. They want to follow Islam in the most excellent way. But Allah bears witness that they are liars. Their mark 
his strictness. Their mark is pretense to excellence. Allah is telling us how to recognize them. They are fundamentalists. They are extremists. They want the best. You want to do Islam, you have to do it in the best way. Otherwise, you're no good. That's the model. But uh, the events, the current events, which are a realization of a verse from Surah Al-Kahf, that one day everything will come out. It is happening now that, and I talked about this before, that the hypocrites are going on TV and saying, you enemies of Muslims, come and invade. We will fight for you. And they indeed go and fight for them. They fought for them in Libya. And when the, uh, the officers of NATO and the representatives of NATO came to Libya to uh, talk to them, you would see those brothers, those Muslims who either belong to um, Al-Qaeda or to the Muslim Brotherhood. You would see them on TV. You can go find these things on YouTube, probably everywhere. They stand there next to um, a NATO officer or next to Hillary Clinton, and they say, Takbir, as the representative of the Christians marches in and celebrates occupying Libya, a Muslim African country. And these Muslims in Libya are such racists. Their main target was dark Libyans. They slaughtered them. They massacred them. And they are still doing it. And their behavior shows that they are heartless and they are not Muslims because they mutilate, they burn, they, they gouge things, they rape. Um, they raped Gaddafi on camera and then they killed him. He was a prisoner. And um, they also take out the hearts, they burn the bodies, they do things that have nothing to do with Islam. So as the Quran tells us in verse 107, they created the masjid, the Muslim organization, out of kufr. They have nothing to do with Islam. They are hypocrites, they are pretenders, they are imposters. And the top imposter is, of course, the Jal and his, his headquarters in Iran, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانِ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوا بِالصَّبْرِ Just um, a short review of how you can understand current events and inshallah these things will not come to America but as, as Muslims here in the safety of, of this uh, country that gives the most safety to Muslims in my experience least understand what's happening and we can speak up if we find ourselves in a place where we can speak up. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawm iddeen. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. Ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqeen. Sirat al-ladheena an'amta alayhim. Ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim. Wa al-dalleen. Amen. Yeah.